William Morris couldn't have improved on his funeral if he'd written it himself. It was like a scene from a Nordic saga. A storm was brewing, rain was lashing across the Oxfordshire countryside. He'd actually died back in London and his body was brought up here by train, which would have rather annoyed him. He never liked trains. Waiting at the station was a harvest cart. It was painted bright red and yellow and entwined with vine leaves. The driver dressed in a smock. The coffin was laid on a bed of moss and brought to Kelmscott. In the last years of his life, Morris was an atheist, but he wanted to be buried here in this tiny 12th century church. As to him, a village church represented everything that was beautiful about the English countryside. It was our link with the past, a museum to the lives of simple, everyday people. The wind was tearing the leaves from the trees as they carried the coffin inside. Following in the wake were Morris's two daughters and their mother, Janie, the famous pre-Raphaelite beauty whose face appears in so many paintings by Rossetti, now gaunt and white-haired. Behind them, Philip Webb, architect of Red House, and, most important of all, Morris's oldest friend, Edward Byrne-Jones. The rain laid off for a few minutes as he was buried. Philip Weber designed the gravestone, which seems somehow rather small and plain for such a noisy, energetic, untidy man as William Morris. The list of his achievements is astonishing. In the course of his life, he wrote over 90 books. He designed wallpapers and fabrics for his company. He illuminated manuscripts, revived the medieval art of tapestry making, and cut the wood blocks for book illustrations. He set up his own printing press, as well as founding the Socialist League and the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. And if this weren't enough, he was also the most popular poet of his day. But you shouldn't think of these things separately, because in Morris's mind they all served the same purpose, and that was to make the world more beautiful. The whole of his life was a crusade against the ugliness of the Industrial Revolution. Morris's view of his ancestry was uncompromising.